Good day everybody, we are still busy on the series of the blood of Jesus and last week we looked at Psalm 22 verse 16 that says that pierce my hands and my feet and Romans 10 verse 15 that says how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good news so today we are going to continue and talk about the blood of Jesus that was shed from his feet to understand that the blood of Jesus is not just for the forgiveness of our sin it is there also for our restoration and it is also to restore the purpose of God within our lives that God doesn't just want to heal you doesn't just want to forgive you but he wants to restore your purpose and this means that it doesn't matter what you did wrong in the past it doesn't matter how you messed up it doesn't matter uh, the mistakes even that you made yesterday you know when you come to Jesus and you truly repent and we know that repentance is not tears repentance is changing your heart changing your mind and walking into a new direction and when that happens we know that God can restore your purpose today and so we have to learn to walk in the will of God every day and of course we see that when we walk in the will of God that everything that we need is taken care of you know other people have anxieties and worries about where things are going to come from but as a child of God when you walk in the purpose of God you know that you are taken care of Romans 8 28 says and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose so God says that things will work out for you in your life when you love God when you walk according to his purpose the steps of the righteous are ordered by God so we looked at what is a purpose last week Matthew 22 verse 37 says Jesus came and he said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and this is the first and great commandment so does God have your heart does God have your first thoughts in the morning when you wake up does he have your last thoughts at night when you go to bed and we need to love God and we need to love like God love is not a feeling it's not an emotion it is not an affection the love we are talking here about is sacrificial love where God came and he gave his only son for you and for me it is a love of laying down our lives and John 15 verse 13 says greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for his friends so the second commandment is in Matthew 22 verse 39 and the second is like it he says you shall love your neighbor as yourself now notice he didn't say you shall love the neighbor that you like he also didn't say you shall love only the neighbor that does things for you he says you shall love God with everything and then you shall love people with everything not just your family not just the people you get along with not just your crowds but you shall love everyone you shall lay down your life and once again as I've said before for me it makes it easier when I look at people and I see their God potential I see what that can be uh, when God is within their life when they have the fullness of God within their lives and then we can impact their lives we can uh, by loving them this is how we love them we win their souls we make disciples but we're getting there so what is the greatest way that you can love another person see the greatest thing that you can do is when someone do not know Christ to bring them the gospel of Jesus Christ and then the thing is if people do know Christ many people are crying out for someone that can mentor them that can guide them because there's a lot of Christians out there that accepted Christ but they don't know how to live this life they're still living in defeat they still have a lot of pain and, and wounded hearts that they don't know how that can be healed through Christ and therefore they need someone that just can just lift them up to the new level within their lives and this is the truth that this is the purpose of God for our lives this is the dream of God do you know that every day God dreams that those who are lost will be found every day he dreams that those who are blind will see he dreams that those who are addicted and are bound by the evils of this world that they will become free and that they will know him and experience his love and his joy and his peace every day God is dreaming that the destitute will be raised up and that those who are poor will hear the good news and what is so sad is that we as his children don't always share these dreams with 
with Him. We don't have the same dreams. And here is the thing, when you and I are a child of God, you know when we see someone bound in sin, when we see someone whose life is going to destruction, our hearts must cry for that person the same way that our Father's heart is breaking for that person. So I want to ask you the question, when was the last time? That you shared the gospel with Jesus Christ? When was the last time that maybe you even shared with people more, that are Christians already, more about the love of God and the word of God within your life? Because that is the purpose of God. We see and we find the purpose of God when we look at Matthew 28 verse 19 and he says to his disciples, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then he says in Mark 16 verse 15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up the, uh, the serpent, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Romans 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God that to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. And then Romans 10 verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And you know the greatest mistake that we can make on earth is to think that this is our pastor's job. Because here is the thing, is that whoever is preaching on stage, whoever is bringing you this word today, cannot reach the people that you can reach. Do not go to the places you go. And therefore it is true that a true revival is not one person doing everything, but it is Everyone doing somewhat, something and everyone reaching somebody, everybody shining their light, everybody doing their part and everybody in the whole church working together. You know, in my life as a young girl, I went to a pair in Germany and I got there and even though I was raised in a Christian home, I didn't live the Christian life like I should because I never knew how to empower people. I wasn't empowered in that way that I could take what I learned and teach it to other people. And therefore I fell in sin and, and, and I came back and years later, which is now, as I started in the ministry, I realized something is wrong. You know, church is not about just preaching on Sundays. It's not just about having prayer meetings. It is about impacting people's life and, and not just uh, not just inspir inspiring them and talking nice little talks, you know, but really motivating them and getting them into action to, to go and change other people's lives as well. And I was thinking if I had the knowledge, if I had the conviction, if I had the understanding of the blood of Jesus at that time that I have now, I could have made such a difference in that place. I could have turned that world around. I could have, even in my au pair friends that I met there from all different countries, I could have invested every time we went together and had a gathering, I could have invested in their life. I could have made a permanent impact, an eternal impact within their life. What a way that would have been to build my life. And therefore I want to encourage, don't waste your time. If you don't know how, get to a church that equips you. That, and this is why even in our church, sometimes we preach the same things over, just in different ways, so that it can become part of who you are, so that it will be easy to teach it to other people. And why don't we walk in the purpose of God? See, this is the thing, sometimes because we don't know how, because no one is teaching us. Other times it's because we are scared or we are distracted. Or it comes just down to the fact that we don't have faith or there's a lack of trust. And what happens when we don't trust God is you get tired, you, you burn out, you get frustrated, you faint, you fall. Remember, being a witness is not something you do because it says you will be a witness. It's something you are. And it just happens automatically when you fill your life with God and with the Word of God. It will just happen you know because halfway through life people come and then they realize oh i'm on a road that i that never will be able to satisfy me and this is why they have a midlife crisis but when you are on the road we are on god's road you will understand that god satisfies you god loves you god fills you and therefore you can give Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. 
they will walk and not faint and therefore when people are living down there it means that you're living up there and therefore we need to trust God saying Lord I don't have the money but I will follow you I don't know what is going to happen but I'm going to follow you I don't even know how to do this but I will follow you step by step and like we spoke last week sometimes we, we we go on a marathon you know and we think in the beginning of the marathon they must hand up everything we're going to need on the road so that we don't get thirsty that we don't get hurt but you, it won't work Everywhere on the road there are points of the designated routes that when you're tired you can rest, that when you need a physician it is there, that when you need refreshments it is there. And this is the same within our lives. You know, we don't know what to expect, we don't get everything we need right at the beginning of our journey. But when we start being faithful to God, what happens at the time that you need it? God will bring someone to uh, a divine appointment, you know, to speak into your life. Or He will bring resources. Or He will bring a time of rest. God brings it at the right time within your life. And therefore, I want to encourage you today. It is by faith. It is besides the thing we see and feel or think. But it is just in trusting God. And those who trust in God renew their strength. And just the way you are. We're going to pray together and I trust in this week that God will work in your heart, that you can make a difference. You know what? Even just when you see someone is down and out at work, go get a coffee and sit with them and say, listen, I just see you're feeling a bit blue today. Can we talk? Or, you know, let me just sit here with you. And things like that, you know, look at other people, have compassion for other people. Just smiling at someone, it's a start. And later God can even open the doors for you. When you get together with your friends and maybe they are gossipers or whatever, maybe you can start and say, you know what, you're talking down on these people. Let us start praying for them and ask God to work in their lives. Are you ready to pray together? Let's just pray. Abba Father, I thank you for each person listening to the word of God. I thank you that the blood of Jesus brings restoration within our lives also for our purpose. That we don't have to walk aimlessly and without hope and without vision within our lives, but that we know that through the blood of Jesus, not even through our abilities or through our education but, and through our training, but it is only through your blood that you sanctify us, that you work within us, that you put everything within us that we need, Lord, to make a difference and an impact in other people's lives. Lord, I pray that we will be wise builders, not just building on natural things and see how it's being destroyed, but Lord, that we will build with the Word of God, that we will not build stuff, but that we will build people and see in this how you come through for us and work in our lives as well. Father, use us. We want to be history makers we want to be world changers lord forgive us when we are so self-centered on our own things father we ask you today use us at our workplace use us in our family use us in our church use us in our community to make a difference to impact other people's lives and to see the kingdom of god being established within those lives and we thank you for your holy spirit that enables us to do this thank you father that we have a newfound purpose in the lord knowing that it is you that enable us thank you that you fill us with the fullness of god within us that we do have everything we need in christ to be able to fulfill this purpose within our lives lord give people wisdom where to start where to care where to sow in people's lives and lord we know that when we keep on sowing that in due season we will reap the reward when we do not lose heart and father we thank you for your grace and your blessing and your favor upon our lives in the mighty name of jesus amen Hallelujah. God bless you.